Thank you for viewing the San Francisco Planning Department's Environmental Impact Report Scoping Meeting Presentation for the Pacific Gas and Electric, or PG&E, Power Assets Acquisition Project. As a brief overview, the project proposed is the city's purchase of PG&E's electric facilities needed for the city to distribute electricity throughout San Francisco. My name is Julie Moore, and I am an environmental planner with the San Francisco Planning Department. I am the coordinator of the Environmental Impact Report, or EIR, for this project. In my presentation, I will provide the framework of the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA, an overview of the proposed project, and information about how you can participate in the environmental review process. With this understanding, we then invite you to attend one of three public scoping meetings to provide oral comments on the issues to be covered in the EIR, or if you prefer, you can consider the information in this presentation and send a written comment to me before the close of the comment period. All public comments, whether verbal or written, will be considered equally in our preparation of the EIR. Now I would like to briefly explain to you the CEQA process that we will be following for the preparation of the EIR. CEQA is the California Environmental Quality Act, which is codified in the CEQA statute, guidelines, and San Francisco Administrative Code. The San Francisco Planning Department, Environmental Planning Division, implements CEQA in San Francisco. The purpose of CEQA is to inform decision makers and the public of the project's environmental impacts, to engage the public in the environmental review process, and to avoid or reduce potential environmental impacts with mitigation measures or alternatives. Because the planning department has determined that the project may have one or more significant impacts on the environment, CEQA requires that an EIR be prepared. The EIR will include an initial study checklist and analysis. The EIR will focus on topics for which environmental impacts would be potentially significant and topics involving more complex analysis. The initial study will address topics for which project impacts would likely be less than significant or less than significant with the inclusion of feasible measures to avoid or substantially reduce the project's significant environmental effects. These measures are called mitigation measures. The EIR will also identify alternatives to the proposed project. The alternative should be capable of achieving the basic objectives of the project while avoiding or substantially lessening any of the project's significant environmental impacts. The EIR will also evaluate the no project alternative, which allows comparison of the impacts of approving the project with the impacts of not approving the project. Unlike other single topic environmental laws, such as the Clean Air Act or the Clean Water Act, CEQA encourages the protection of all aspects of the environment by requiring preparation of multidisciplinary environmental impact analyses. Together, the initial study and EIR will discuss about 18 different environmental topics as shown here. The city's initial study checklist lists these topics in more detail. The project includes acquisition of all of PG&E's distribution and transmission assets that are needed for the city to provide safe and reliable electricity service to customers in San Francisco. After the city completes its acquisition of the assets, the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, or SFPUC, would own, operate, and maintain the electricity grid in San Francisco, most of which is currently owned by PG&E. The change in ownership itself would not result in physical changes to the environment. However, there would be some new construction needed that would change existing conditions, such as new excavations and structures, resulting in physical changes to the environment. This work would be located primarily at the southern edge of the city and along the county border, the areas shown in red and blue on this slide and more close up on the next. The SFPUC would need to physically separate PG&E's existing electric system into two separate systems to allow both systems to be safely, reliably, and independently operated by SFPUC 
and PG&E. After system separation, the SFPUC would provide electricity service to San Francisco customers, and PG&E would continue to provide electricity service to its customers outside of San Francisco. This separation would generally occur along the San Francisco-San Mateo County border, shown as a yellow line in this figure. To separate the electric systems, the SFPUC would modify existing distribution system infrastructure, generally within 1,000 feet of the county border, as shown in blue, construct new underground distribution feeder lines, shown in red, and modify the existing transmission system Martin substation, located at the red dot in this figure, or, as a variant of the project, construct a new substation in the Daly City Yard, which is adjacent to the Martin substation. These locations are where the project could have physical environmental effects that will be studied in the EIR. I will go into more detail about these project components in a bit. Currently, the SFPUC provides more than 70% of the electricity consumed in San Francisco through Hetch Hetchy Power and Clean Power SF. Hetch Hetchy Power is San Francisco's public power utility, which has provided clean, safe, and reliable power to San Francisco for more than 100 years. The Hetch Hetchy Power System generates clean energy from three hydroelectric powerhouses, 27 solar arrays, and one biogas generation facility. This energy helps power some of San Francisco's municipal assets, including streetlights, the airport, general hospital, and public libraries, in, in addition to some residential and commercial developments. Clean Power SF is San Francisco's community choice energy program that provides clean electricity from wind, solar, geothermal, and hydroelectric sources to meet the needs of more than 380,000 residential and commercial customers. However, as this diagram shows, SFPUC sourced energy supplies must be delivered to and throughout San Francisco through PG&E owned and operated transmission and distribution facilities. According to the SFPUC, the acquisition of the distribution and transmission assets needed to provide electricity services to all end users in San Francisco is an important and necessary step in reducing San Francisco's reliance on PG&E for electric service in the city, and a crucial step towards local control of San Francisco's energy future. It would allow the city to deliver Hetch Hetchy power and other clean power to all San Francisco customers, expanding on the electric service the city started providing in 1918. The SFPUC states this would improve the cost and timelines of electric grid connections and allow the city to own and operate the city's electric system, providing local ownership, control, and decision-making. As mentioned previously, the environmental review will focus on project components involving physical changes to the environment. These new components listed here fall into one of five categories, which will be described further in the next few slides. The first category is the Martin substation separation. This is an aerial photograph of the Martin substation located on Geneva Avenue and Bayshore Boulevard in Brisbane. The Martin substation, shown here outlined in red, is the source for the PG&E transmission lines supplying electricity to San Francisco. It also reduces voltage from transmission to distribution service voltages. For the city to provide electricity service to San Francisco customers, one option is to reconfigure and partition the existing PG&E Martin substation into two interconnected utility systems, one serving San Francisco and one serving PG&E's customers in San Mateo County. Separation at the Martin substation is the proposed project. Construction would entail a sequence of disconnecting and reconnecting the types of equipment shown on the next slide, installing underground duct banks and vaults, and installing above-ground structures such as control houses, circuit breakers, and transformers. Excavation to access existing duct banks for reconnection, 
as well as construction of new underground duct banks and bolts to connect the equipment within the Martin substation project area would be necessary to separate the two systems. The area outlined in pink is the area in which construction activities could occur. Upon completion of the system separation, the SFPUC would retain a portion of this area as its substation to serve San Francisco. The area outlined in dark blue to the left of the stub substation is PG&E's Daily City Yard. The shaded blue square is the approximate area that would be used for staging equipment and materials during construction. This slide shows an example substation and the general types of equipment that may be modified at the Martin substation as part of the proposed project. Instead of the Martin substation separation, the SFPUC could construct a new substation on the adjacent Daly City Yard, the approximate location shown here in pink. This will be studied in the EIR as a project variant at the same level of detail as the proposed project. The substation would differ from the existing Martin substation as it would use gas insulated equipment located inside two to three story structures and have a smaller footprint. The maximum building height would be 30 feet. Pile driving would be needed for this type of construction. Construction would still occur within the area outlined in orange for transmission lines to the new substation. This figure also shows a general rendering of the project variant from Geneva Avenue with its structures and outdoor areas enclosed by fencing. Some of San Francisco's southwestern neighborhoods are supplied by distribution feeder lines from PG&E's Daly City substation located in Daly City outside the boundaries of this figure. Replacement distribution lines would be needed for these customers because the, these feeder lines would be disconnected near the county boundary as part of the acquisition. The project includes construction of approximately 3.75 miles of new duct banks for the distribution express feeder lines. The route would be along Brotherhood Way, Huron Avenue, Sickles Avenue, Sagamore Street, Alamany Boulevard, and Geneva Avenue, to the substation as shown in red on this slide. The feeder express line would start either at the Martin substation for the proposed project or the Daly City Yard if the variant is selected. Construction of the duct banks would be similar to other underground utility work in the public right of way, open trenching and installation of the duct banks and vaults. Such construction is anticipated to require temporary lane closures for several blocks at a time as construction proceeds. However, at the I-280 crossing, a trenchless method under the highway would be used. Local distribution separation would occur in the area shaded in blue and will be discussed in another slide. This figure shows an example of an underground duct bank. Work within the Martin substation, as well as distribution system separation work on city streets, could utilize underground duct banks to protect and route electrical cables between connections with electrical equipment or structures. As shown in this figure, cables would typically be located within PVC pipes and encased in concrete in an underground trench. The proposed distribution express feeders would be constructed in a similar manner. Now I will describe the local distribution system separation work that would take place within a thousand feet of the county border as shown in the blue shading on the earlier slide. The border between San Francisco and San Mateo counties is not split along a single street. Blocks weave in and out of the border and are serviced by the nearest distribution line, regardless of the jurisdiction. In other words, some loads in San Francisco are supplied by distribution lines in Daly City and vice versa. The local distribution system separation would result in two distinct electric systems. The San Francisco customers would be serviced by SFPUC-owned distribution lines, and PG&E San Mateo County customers would be serviced by PG&E-owned distribution lines south of the county border. The new distribution line segments would be either connected by overhead wires on new or existing poles or enclosed in new underground duct banks within city streets and sidewalks. This photo is illustrative of work that could occur along the city's southern border. 
Local distribution system separation would also include installation and or replacement of poles, overhead equipment, and underground equipment to main service to locations served by distribution lines at a different voltage than the available nearby grid. The final group of components include a variety of small changes. At some sites, PG&E owned natural gas and electrical equipment are located on the same site. SFPUC would acquire the electrical equipment at these locations and would make site modifications, such as fencing, to separate the site and allow PG&E continued access to its non-electric facilities. The SFPUC would modify the interior of an existing building in San Francisco to house a centralized operations control center. The operations control center would require approximately 20,000 square feet of space and allow grid operators to monitor the flow of electricity, forecast demand, monitor and ensure the overall security of the systems. SFPUC anticipates sufficient space would be available in a single existing building. However, a specific building has not yet been identified. SFPUC would implement system reinforcements to maintain system reliability and the ability to restore power in the event of outages for utilities on either side of the San Francisco-San Mateo County border. Activities would include reconnecting circuits, adding, replacing, or upgrading electrical protection equipment, such as fuses and automatic sectionalizing devices, to maintain system safety and reliability. SFPUC would use city-owned, existing maintenance and storage properties, or space at acquired substations to house equipment, trucks, and crew parking. Modifications such as fencing would be needed to securely store equipment in the storage yards. Construction is expected to take one and a half to three years. Construction of the different components, such as substation work and distribution express feeders, could occur at the same time. Construction would use conventional equipment and trenchless equipment as needed. The total energy delivered to serve San Francisco electricity customers is not expected to change as a result of the proposed project. Operations and maintenance of the system would involve routine inspections, meter readings, periodic testing, and as-needed repair and replacement of existing equipment during regular maintenance cycles following California Public Utilities Commission's guidelines and general orders. These are the same guidelines applicable to PG&E's existing operations and to SFPUC's current power operations. The first step of the EIR process was the issuance of a Notice of Preparation, or NOP, of an EIR and Notice of Scoping Meetings. This notice was sent out on June 28th to solicit participation in determining the scope of the EIR from agencies and the public. The NOP includes a brief description of the project, probable environmental effects of the project, and indicates where written and oral comments on the scope of the EIR may be provided. The notice states that written comments should be submitted by Friday, July 28th. The NOP is available on the Planning Department website. The next step of the EIR process will be analysis of environmental effects and publication of the draft EIR, which will include an initial study. The Planning Department will consider the comments received during this public scoping meeting regarding the physical environmental effects of the project in the preparation of the draft EIR. Please note that written responses to comments received during the EIR scoping period will not be prepared. The Planning Department anticipates publishing the draft EIR for public review in the fall of 2024. Comments on the draft EIR can be submitted in writing or made during the draft EIR public hearing at the Planning Commission, which will be held about a month after publication. Following the close of the draft EIR comment period, the Planning Department will prepare a comments and responses document. This will, document will contain written responses to all substantive comments received during the draft EIR review period. It will also identify any changes to the draft EIR as necessary to fully respond to the comments received. The comments and responses document will be distributed to those who commented on the draft EIR, various agencies, and other interested parties. 
About two weeks after the publication of the Comments and Responses document, a hearing will be held before the Planning Commission where they will be asked to certify the final EIR, which will consider, consist of the draft EIR together with the Comments and Responses document. Certification of the EIR would not mean that the project is approved or disapproved. Rather, it would only satisfy the CEQA environmental review requirements for the proposed project. Project approval or disapproval is a completely separate consideration from the adequacy of the EIR. Permits and approvals for the project would be required from numerous local, state, and federal agencies, including the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, the California Public Utilities Commission, the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, the Department of Toxic Substances Control, California Coastal Commission, Regional Water Board, Bay Area Air Quality Management District, among others. We welcome your comments on the environmental issues to be analyzed in the EIR. Comments are most helpful when they address particular environmental concerns or suggest feasible alternatives that could reduce environmental impacts. Comments can be submitted by email or mail to me or at one of our three public scoping meetings. We will hold two in-person meetings, one in San Francisco and one in Brisbane, which will include an informal open house for one half hour prior to the meeting. We will also have one fully virtual meeting. The dates, time, and link for these meetings are shown on this slide and are in the NOP. The presentation at these meetings will be the same as this one. As I mentioned, scoping comments can be emailed or mailed to me. All comments, whether verbal or written, receive the same consideration. Please submit written comments to me by 5 p.m. Friday, July 28th. You should submit comments to the address indicated on the notice and in this slide. The NOP is available on our website at sfplanning.org backslash sfsequidocs. If you have questions or comments concerning the Project Environmental Review, please contact me, Julie Moore, the Planning Department EIR Coordinator, at 628-652-7566 or send me an email at cpc period pge power assets eir at sfgov.org with your contact information. Thank you for your interest in this project.